When you've been trying to get pregnant, you're pretty much willing to do absolutely anything that you think might work, right, to get pregnant. However, supplements can get pretty expensive and it leaves you wondering if it's not possible to get the nutrients from your food, are these really all necessary, and if so, which ones are your must-haves? Well, that's exactly what I'll be talking about in this video. I'm going to give you my top three fertility supplements that I have pretty much all of my patients on and I'll explain to you why they are relevant for fertility and what to look out for when you're buying them. If this is the first time that you are seeing one of my videos, hello lovely! I'm Ingfler Spray and I'm a natural fertility specialist helping couples worldwide to fall pregnant with videos on this channel and my program The Fertility Reclaim. The most common question I get about supplements for fertility is can I just get it all from my food? And ideally, yes! But I find that most of us, and especially my patients, are actually pretty malnourished. And that has to do with the fact that we've just gotten so far away from the traditional way of eating. Besides, when you're trying to conceive, you can use a little bit of extra. And honestly, in the traditional way of eating, this is covered too. You're expected to eat certain amounts of certain things when you are trying. So a bit of extra supplements to accelerate your journey towards pregnancy is I don't think luxury. Hey, I guess it kind of goes without saying, but I should say this. When you are watching the information in this video, please use your own discernment. I don't know your personal case. If you have severe liver issues or if you're on particular medication, it will be smart to talk to your doctor before you introduce these supplements or even better, find a nutritionist that is qualified to guide you in supplementation for your fertility journey. My number one favorite, and I wonder if you can guess it if you've been watching me for a little bit longer, it's omega fatty acids. And I'm namely talking about omega-3. So your EPA and DHA is what you will find on the bottles. They are mega <laughs> important for the development of the embryo, of the baby in utero, and of young children, especially when it comes to brain development. And not only that, if you have adequate amounts that significantly reduces pregnancy complications. To increase your chances of actually falling pregnant, omegas really help you with the production of healthy sex hormones. Omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory, so if you are tending towards inflammation and very painful periods could be an indication or having frequent infections could be an indication, then you're definitely going to want to have your omega-3s because if your body is in an inflammatory state, do you think it would be willing and ready to receive that baby and grow it? Mm, not so much. And when it comes to egg and sperm quality, omegas are very important because they allow the cells to properly export toxins from the cells and to import nutrients into the cells. So if you are deficient in this, that significantly compromises egg and sperm health because it's all about that cell membrane that is nice and healthy so that the bad stuff can go out and the good stuff can go in. Before supplementing, ideally you would test what your levels are exactly. And we're talking about the index. So we're talking the ratios between omega-3, 6, and 9. Our diets these days contain a lot of 6 and 9 which means we are out of balance with three and it's all about the balance. So a lot of the ratios these days are between 10 to 20 of omega-6 stands to one, while ideally it would be one to four stands to one. So you see how this is a really, really big issue. So that has to do with the way that we eat these days. Even eating fish at least twice a week these days probably don't give you the right levels either because the fish themselves don't have the right levels anymore either because a lot of them are fed soy. And then on top of that, you can ask yourself the question whether you will want to be eating a lot of fish anyway if you can't guarantee the quality because of the whole mercury toxicity issue. So you might prefer supplementing with a high quality fish oil to make sure that you're getting your EPAs and DHAs. So up to five grams a day of EPA, DHA is considered safe. I tend to prescribe around two grams a day to my patients, but again, I have them usually take an omega index test first. For the patients that don't do that or they don't want to or they can't or you know in the past when I wasn't doing those testing, I would usually prescribe them between 1500, so one and a half grams to two grams daily, both men and women. 
Number two is vitamin C and we fully depend on our food sources for vitamin C because we cannot produce it at all. And you may know this vitamin as being water soluble and it is a completely all rounder. So I'm not going to cover every amazing little bit of vitamin C. I will talk about the highlights. The very first thing that I find incredibly interesting is the fact that in our bodies, the highest concentration of vitamin C can be found in our pituitary gland and our adrenal glands. And fertility wise, that is interesting because we depend on our pituitary glands for the production of sex hormones. And then adrenal glands, which sit right on top of your kidneys, these are our stress regulators, I suppose, but they also produce sex hormones, namely progesterone. So if you're struggling with a progesterone issue and you're highly stressed, chances are that your body is prioritizing the production of stress hormones over progesterone. And guess what? Taking additional vitamin C can actually help. And research has shown that women that struggle with low progesterone or short luteal phase are able to lengthen their luteal phase and improve their progesterone levels just by adding in vitamin C. Vitamin C is essential in a repair and regeneration processes in our body. And this is why it's also really helpful when we're recovering from a cold or we've had the flu. It helps us back onto our feet very quickly. It's also important for the absorption of iron. So if you struggle with anemia, but you're not taking enough vitamin C, then this is worth considering as well, not just focusing on your iron intake. Speaking of metals, uh, metals that we don't like, <laughs> I mentioned them earlier with the fish, are mercury, but also lead. And vitamin C really helps our bodies to get rid of both of these. And that is why I always recommend my patients to take vitamin C, especially especially when they're doing a homeopathic detox protocol to pull heavy metals out of their tissues. Since heavy metals compromise egg and sperm health significantly, you can see how adding in vitamin C on top of detoxing the heavy metals is like, like the ideal combination. And it's especially ideal for egg and sperm quality because vitamin C you may already know as an antioxidant. So it protects the quality of our cells, the DNA, and then when it comes to egg and sperm cells, the RNA. I mentioned vitamin C as being really helpful when you've been sick, and that is because a vitamin C is also anti-inflammatory. Now there's a lot of discussion on whether it's useful to take vitamin C when you're about to get sick, but I know from experience if you have the right quality of vitamin C, it can definitely reduce the intensity of a cold or the flu, or it can, um, it can actually turn it around for you. And I've seen this with a lot of my patients as well. And it's my theory that because vitamin C is anti-inflammatory, that is why it is able to lower cholesterol. So this has come out of the research that cholesterol is lowered when vitamin C is supplemented, but what is a little bit of a not so known fact, I suppose, is that cholesterol isn't necessarily bad. It's a reaction of our body when we are struggling with a problem because it repairs. Cholesterol is produced to repair. So if you have high cholesterol, rather than say, oh, you have high cholesterol, let's just lower that, give you lots of medication to lower it, try and figure out what the source might be. With most of my patients that have high cholesterol, I am able to pinpoint an inflammation in their body. And then when you start to address that, the body will react by lowering cholesterol because it doesn't need as much of it anymore to repair the issue. There's some controversy over the dosage of vitamin C because although it is uh, in water soluble, so people say, oh, well, you can't take too much because you'll just pee it out if it's too much. There are also people that are saying that it causes kidney stones. Now, research does not support this at all. At the same time, I like to err on the side of caution. So if my patient actually has a personal history of diagnosed kidney stones, we might reduce the intake of vitamin C or the length of time that we do high dosages. But I just wanted to mention that research does not support this at all. So while some say that uh, two grams a day is the safe upper limit, others like the European Food Safety Authority say that there isn't an upper limit necessary at all. And I think this is also why a lot of practitioners that actually do prescribe like in the 10 and the 20 thousands of milligrams a day, so that's 10 to 20 grams a day, have a lot of success. 
but I would never recommend that you do this at home yourself. If you want to go higher than two grams a day, it's probably a good idea to do that under the supervision of a practitioner. It is always possible though, that if you are coming down with a cold or you're recovering, that you take a bit more for a shorter period of time. You can take hourly dosages, two hourly dosages of thousand milligrams. The point is, I guess with everything that I've said, if you're only taking the vitamin C that is in your multi right now, you are safe to increase the levels a little bit to boost your fertility and improve egg and sperm quality especially. Another good tip is that if you're taking vitamin C that you take it in the split dose, so not everything in the morning or in the evening, but that you, for example, as I sometimes prescribe to my patients three times a day, a thousand milligrams, and that if you start to get diarrhea, that this is a sign to you that you have reached your upper limit so that you should tone it down a little bit. When you're buying vitamin C, I recommend buying powder because first of all, it's easy to change your dosage. And secondly, you then put it in water and vitamin C is in water soluble. So it's a lot easier for your body to get to work with it right away. When you're buying vitamin C, don't buy ascorbic acid, which is often hard in the digestion. Instead, buy magnesium ascorbate or um, calcium ascorbate. And the latter you can also buy as ester C, which is a patented uh, complex, which is known uh, for you to stay around in your body two times longer than natural vitamin C. And then number three, ubiquitol. Definitely one of my favorites and one of the staples for my patients. Ubiquinol we can get from our food, especially organ meat, but also poultry and dark green vegetables, but we can also produce it ourselves. The problem is as we age, we become a lot less efficient in this. And that is an issue because it compromises the energy production for cells, but also the protection, the antioxidant qualities of the cell membrane. And this is why you may see that especially for older couples, ubiquinol is recommended for the protection and for the improvement of egg and sperm quality. I actually have two videos, one on egg quality and one on sperm quality. So if you haven't seen those, at the end of this video, go ahead and click on those because they will give you way more tools to naturally improve both egg and sperm quality and improve your chances of falling pregnant like way quicker. So you may also know ubiquinol as CoQ10 and CoQ10 is not actually ubiquinol, it's ubiquinone. And ubiquinone needs to be converted in our body to ubiquinol to be actually useful. And as I said, this is an issue that uh, becomes a lot harder as we age. It's just the way it is. So this is the reason that I've always recommended to my patients to get ubiquinol instead of CoQ10 or ubiquinone. However, I do know that there is some more research these days that there's also ubiquinone versions that are produced in a more bioavailable way so that the body can actually take it up and use it properly. Still, for the moment, I stick to ubiquinol, but feel free to do your research on this and pick what is right for you. Because of the difference between CoQ10 or ubiquinone and ubiquinol, it's also really important to look at which ones you're picking before you decide on a dosage. Since I recommend ubiquinol, you can take less of it because your body's able to use it a lot quicker and a lot easier. And I recommend between one to 300 milligrams uh, a day, basically, both for men and women again. So I'll prescribe a bit higher dosage for my patients that are considered to be a little bit older, but I definitely recommend it to my younger patients as well, because when they come to me, we are going to give them a boost to get pregnant as quickly and as healthily as possible. So boosting the quality of cells, especially the egg and sperm cells, is uh, again, not a luxury in my opinion. So often I will have them on a bit of a lower dosage for about three months. If you do a little bit of research, you will find that 200 milligrams a day is pretty much a standard dosage that is suggested to support egg and sperm quality. And if you want to have more tools to improve egg and sperm quality pretty quickly, like in three cycles, then head on over to one of the videos that are on your screen right now. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.